Hey ya, uh, Archaeus here. I just wanted to go over cluster jewels and take a look at how I go about fitting them into my build, and either crafting or picking which one to purchase. To start with, when looking at cluster jewels, I generally look at how many passive skills it adds and also what the small passives will grant. So for example here we have increased fire damage, there's increased critical strike chance, and here is maximum life. Uh, this matters because this will affect what notables can roll on the cluster jewel, and in general, you want the lowest amount of passive skills. There is always exceptions to this rule, such as for small passive clusters. There is increased mana reservation efficiency that you can get. You would want a three passive of that, and they are quite more expensive than two passive alternatives. One of the main reasons I look at adding in a cluster jewel to my build is to consolidate some of the points on my tree closer together, as well as getting the two added passive skills of jewel sockets. So right here, I'm actually using two here which saves me having to path to other jewel uh, sockets around the tree. When looking at a cluster jewel to swap into, I'll look at the notables available for my type of damage. And so I moved into Storm Drinker here, because it allowed me to swap out of the Elemental Mastery, the bottom one there, Elemental Damage Leeched as Energy Shield. And although I only get half as much uh, Energy Shield Leech here, I do also get to add 8% uh, Lightning Penetration on top of that, for the same point if I end up pathing through this anyway. For some of the notables on Cluster Jewels, you can also find things like Alchemist Genius on Spike Concoction here. This is generally not something you can find on the tree, but this allows you to actually pick it up instead of getting it somewhere on your gear, like on a belt. There are also things that only appear on Masteries, such as the Energy Shield Leech we just looked at, and being able to move that onto our Cluster Jewel instead of having to pick up an entire notable wheel to get the Mastery is really nice as well. One of the biggest selling points for Cluster Jewels is their ability to push your character's damage. I have a level 67 Poisonous Concoction character here, and just by adding a Cluster Jewel here, we can increase our damage by between 20 and 30%. This is great because we're going so close to a large Jewel Socket to put it in anyway, and also we can get these particular notables on a pretty low level Cluster Jewel, which makes going for something like this on your League Starter not too terrible if you're going to go and do Foothills Farming. For Foothills Farming, Carv has a pretty in-depth video on that over on his channel, and I'll leave a link to the video in the description. If we move over to PoEDB and go to our modifiers, scroll down to jewels and we're going to take a look at large cluster jewels here. We can actually go in and find the chaos damage notables and look at the three mods we just had which were Wicked Pal, Unholy Grace and Unwaveringly Evil. We can check the minimum eye level for them here on the right. And so we can see that Unwaveringly Evil has an eye level of 1, the same with Unholy Grace, and Wicked Pal has eye level requirement of 50. The next up is 68 and 75, so as long as we get a cluster jewel between eye level 50 and 67, we'll actually be able to not roll any of these modifiers here. This can make rolling your cluster jewel a lot easier, especially in the early start of your league. We can also see the tags here, they all do share the chaos tag, but as you can see Unholy Grace also has attack, caster, and speed tags for it, meaning that you can use fossils and harvest reforges to hit this a lot more often. When it comes to cluster jewels though, I am pretty lazy and I do prefer to go out and buy them where possible. For my build, I wanted Storm Drinker, Overshock and Doryani's Lesson on an 8 passive. And if I go ahead and search here, you can see there's not very many available and they do cost around 6 divines. So instead, I had a look and I saw Doryani's Lesson was easily the hardest one to get. And so by swapping that out for widespread destruction here, which was much more common, I ended up picking mine up quite a bit earlier for about 130 chaos, but now you can get them for 60 to 70 chaos. I ended up doing this because instead of the Life Leech, I managed to fit in Vitality into my build instead, and so I just swapped out Life Leech for a bit of Life Regeneration instead, and saved myself a lot of currency for that trade-off. Going over to my build, this is how I ended up swapping out some points to fit in a Cluster Jewel. I was already pathing down to two Jewel Sockets here and here for quite a few points each, and so I ended up taking these out knowing that I would end up with two on my Cluster Jewel. This freed up eight points and allowed me to get to my cluster jewel here for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and so I needed to find one or two more points so I could fit in another jewel socket and over overshock. So I ended up pathing around lightning walker here in the middle, so I could pick up a few extra points from that and was expecting to make up the damage loss from that with these notables themselves. So I can pick up that and I end up with one more point spare anyway, which I threw in here. From there I had a look at my masteries because of storm drinker allowing me to leech energy shield from that. I could swap out my Elemental Mastery, which I needed the all resistances, because I was relying on the 15% Lightning resistance from Lightning Walker. So that's how I went about swapping into a Cluster Jewel on my build, 
and I ended up getting away with it a little bit cheaper than the rest, just because I was willing to make a sacrifice on the leech versus vitality. If you made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Please do consider hitting subscribe and checking out some of the other videos. Thank you.